the praise of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He's here, hallelujah. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Oh, King of King, hallelujah, Lord of God, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. El salmista escribió. The psalmist wrote. Cantad alegres a Dios habitantes de toda la tierra. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Servid al Señor con alegría. Serve the Lord with gladness. Venid ante su presencia con regocijo. Come before his presence with singing. So su presencia está aquí esta mañana. His presence is here this morning. Su presencia está aquí esta mañana. His presence is here this morning. El patriarca Jacob. The patriarch Jacob. Estaba en un lugar. He was in a place la presencia de Dios estaba ahí. where the presence of the Lord was there. Pero él dijo, but he said, la presencia de Dios está aquí. surely the presence is in this place. Pero yo no lo sabía. And I knew it not. Yo no lo sabía. He said, I knew it not. Esta mañana, but this morning, no podemos decir lo mismo. we can't say the same. Nosotros sabemos we know que aquí está that in this place la presencia de Dios. is the presence of the Lord. La presencia de Dios. The presence of the Lord. La presencia de Dios. The presence of the Lord. Aquí esta mañana. Is in this place this morning. Al Señor en este día. Let's continue to rejoice Alleluia. and worship and praise the Lord this morning. The presence of the Lord is here alone. The presence of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Feel it in the atmosphere. The Spirit of the Lord is here alone. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. The power of the Lord. Oh yeah, he's here right now. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. You will find he's not too busy to hear your hearts cry. The presence the of the Lord is here. The presence of the, the Lord. Of the Lord is here. I feel it in I feel the atmosphere. In the the presence of the Lord is here. The presence is here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord.
That's the Holy Ghost. I said, can't you see him working on the outside? I can feel him moving on the inside. So go on and enter in and cast your cares on him. He'll open up the window. When the Lord steps in, he brings everything you need. Trust him and believe him and by faith you will receive and take me. The presence of the Lord. Come on, some of you need to dance before the Lord. Before the Lord. Hey. It's my time for God's favor. It's my time to be blessed. It's my time, it's my time, time for, for God's, God's favor. favor. It's, my time. it's my time to be blessed. Hey, it's my time. I wish somebody right now, you shouldn't be here today, but all of a sudden you found yourself at an altar and where sin should have killed you. In exchange for your sins, he gave you a robe of righteousness. I wasn't worthy, but all I did was step in, step in, step in, be blessed. Step in, step in, step in and be blessed. Step in, step in, step in. Come on, just a little bit longer in the presence of the Lord.
voice all across the building, you would give him a shout of praise. He's worthy. me that God's not real. I've seen too many miracles. I felt him as he came upon me. I felt the Holy Ghost as it overflowed. You might be able to convince somebody else, but you came too late to tell me. You may wonder why I'm so excited because I believe in heaven and I'm going to spend eternity with Jesus while some dance for recreation, some dance for joy. I dance because of what he brought me from and what he's taken me to. Next Sunday is a very special Sunday. It's our annual vision service. Amen. There's, like I said, a lot going on, a lot of construction that is happening. And uh, the vision service helps us, amen, understand where we've been where we are, and where we're going. So invite everybody to be here for that service. Brother Myers will continue his study. Hasn't even been a, doing a great job, amen, of ministering to us about harmony in the body of Christ. And uh, we really appreciate that. So 10 o'clock next Sunday is that. Immediately after service, there's two things that are happening. There's an evangelism soup sale that they're having, tremendous soup. If you want to buy some or purchase some, you have to pre-order today uh immediately after service and i believe wednesday will be the last day to be able to do that we have industry expo uh next sunday immediately after service now if you ask well what's the ministry expo every ministry or department of the church is going to have a presentation in the gym they'll have a table set up they'll have a table for the youth department the sunday school department the ushers the hostesses the maintenance department uh, brother keepers, whatever ministry there is in the church, they're going to have a table set up in the gym. It'll be your opportunity to go and interact with the leadership of the church. If you are interested in helping, assisting, being a part of, that will be your time to be able to go, well, I'm interested in singing in the choir. Let me go to the choir table and see what those guidelines are, what I need to do, who to contact, who can contact me. Amen, to be a part of the choir. And that's, that's how we do it here at the Church of Columbus. So if you're interested in being or helping with the youth department, Brother Jet, Sister Jet, I have a table there. You can go to the table, get the information, get the information what the youth is doing. Amen, for the remainder of the year, how you can be a part, the help that they need. Uh, the the uh, cleaning services, the ladies that clean the church will be there. They'll have a table if you're interested in helping that. It's a very important service, vision service. And then it's an opportunity for us to come together after service to see how we can help with the vision of the church, amen, by saying, hey, I want to be a part of this ministry. So we invite everybody to be a part of vision service, then immediately following service, going to the gymnasium, and that will have our, uh, our ministry expo next Sunday immediately after service. Amen. amen. Next Sunday, of course, is our vision service, and uh, we're going to show you some slides of the progress believe it or not behind those walls there is a lot of progress being made uh, when you walk through the front door I smell the progress brother Vidal's already alluded to that I don't know what that smell was but I am super sensitive to smell sometimes and uh, it hit me as soon as I walked in the door the other day and uh, eventually all of that will be replaced by the smell of new carpet New theater seats and loose seating and up in the balcony. Hallelujah. And some new paint here and there. And I, I'm looking forward to that part of it. <laughs> but you'll want to be here for our vision service next Sunday. We'll show you some slides of the progress. Uh, you'll see some things you haven't been able to see that are hidden behind those walls. And we'll kind of bring you up to speed on what will be happening over the next few weeks. So you will definitely want to be here next Sunday. Somebody say amen. A couple of days ago, my wife and I received a phone call from a uh, sister in the church <clears throat> that the devil has been trying to hold hostage with cancer, and she was so excited, and when my wife told me what she had said, I was so excited, I felt like running around the house, 
And she very excitedly told my wife that she had gotten a wonderful report from the doctors and that she is cancer-free. Sister Linda Brown. <clears throat> Hallelujah. What a God. What a God. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. Glory to God. Sister Brown, your church loves you. God loves you. Yes. Glory. <clears throat> Let me remind you of our theme for 2022. What is it? No, <clears throat> what can kill a child of God? If God has purpose for your life, it doesn't make any difference what the devil throws at you. You can't die. And what can kill you? No, not nothing. Glory to God. God is a healer of cancer. As a matter of fact, uh, Sister Kristen is a walking miracle. God healed her of cancer several years ago. God has purpose for your life. Nothing can kill you. As long as your life has purpose in God's kingdom, nothing can kill you. No not nothing. Brother Leonard, are you here this morning? Brother, are you here? Would you mind raising your hand if you are? Are you here? Yes? No? <clears throat> uh, he also is battling cancer. But when God has a purpose for your life, we went, we went over this during the theme sermon. It doesn't make any difference what the devil throws at you. Nothing can kill you. Not cancer, not COVID, not heart attacks, not brain tumors, not car accidents, not fire or flood or wind or storm, not plane crashes. No, not nothing can kill you. Hallelujah. Yeah, but the devil, the devil nothing. He doesn't have the keys to death anymore. He does. Death is no longer the domain of the devil. God holds the keys to death and hell. Woo, hallelujah. And I serve him. If you serve him, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Woo, my. No, not nothing. Mm. Psalm 1825, to the faithful, you show yourself faithful. Let the ushers come. We'll wait on you for your morning tithes and offerings. <clears throat> Did you know that God has no obligation to the unfaithful? Let me just forewarn you that the time will come the time will come when you will call on God for something that you, your job, your insurance company, your doctor, your friends will not be able to provide for you. And when that time comes, you will want God to be faithful to you. But you just remember this. God is faithful to the faithful. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. So let's give this morning faithfully, shall we? Precious Jesus, you've never failed us. You hear our cry. You respond to our needs. You've never let us down. I pray that as we return a portion of your blessing, you would receive what we have to offer with love, dear Lord. Bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. amen. God bless you as you give.
Uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Need to remember Pamela Campbell. She uh, has muscular disease of some sort and needing prayer. And Brother Buddy requested that the church pray. Karen Harper is currently waiting for her double lung transplant right now at the hospital. And we need to remember her again. God is at work. And Mike Leonard and Wayne Thompson, we need to remember them as they are uh, dealing with cancer. And we know that God is able to raise them up just like he did Linda Brown. Amen. Scripture says this morning to count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Now, it doesn't say if you do. It says when you do, you're supposed to look to God who is the author and finisher of your faith. Amen. Uh, but know this morning that those trials and afflictions that you experience, they are known by God. They're known by God and there is a purpose behind the process and that is to grow your faith and your trust in Him. We don't go through anything just by happenstance, God has got a plan. He's got a purpose for your life. Pastor just said it. His word declares that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, Paul was not making a casual statement, but he was making a statement of fact. Uh, God is with you always from now till eternity. You can count on him and he is walking right beside you. You are not by yourself. Uh, you're not going it alone. So you can trust him to keep his word and that should allow you to count it all joy because God is walking right by your side. Amen. Can we stand this morning? We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to open our altars and if you have a need, we ask that you would come. Let the ministry pray for you and let you receive your miracle today. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for each and every person that is in this assembly. We ask that, God, you would anoint their hearts and their minds to receive uh, every song that is sung, every word that is spoken and preached today. Uh, Lord God, we ask that you would touch those that are afflicted in their body. God, send those healing virtues uh, of your power upon Paula Campbell. Lord, we ask that you would touch Karen Harper right now and guide the hands of the physician. Lord, we ask that that you would touch Mike Leonard and Wayne Thompson, that they too can declare they are cancer free. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, worship as they sing about the goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I'm gonna sing Of the goodness of God Oh, yes All my life you have been faithful So, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm gonna sing Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God oh yeah yes all my life you have been faithful So, so good with her. 
First of all, I'd like to thank Pastor Shepard for asking me to teach these lessons and challenging me because it's important to grow. It's important to step out of your comfort zone. I said this last week, and I'll reiterate it. In my field, if you ever reach equilibrium, if you ever stop growing, then you're dead, right? We try to stay as far away from equilibrium as possible, but I know what it's like. Equilibrium is comfortable. The comfort zone is safe. It's easy, but you've got to have someone in your life that will push you to go a little bit beyond, to get you out of that comfort zone, because you don't grow in the comfort zone. You just, that's where you die. I also want to thank uh, the ladies and gentlemen of the sound booth. I uh, taxed them this week with quite a few slides. Um, this is going to be a little bit more like I typically do uh, in one of my lectures at the university, so hopefully I uh, won't put you to sleep, keep it exciting and interesting. So last week, you were all very patient as we established why we were talking about the body of Christ. And we explored and looked that Paul was using it to address potential divisions in the church. And we learned that it's love that holds the body together. Not just any normal love, but agape love. The love of God that holds, holds the body together. And it's that holding together, that joining together that actually nourishes the body. And we're going to continue that discussion here today. And I want to talk to us. We're going to zoom in a little bit more because I am a molecular biochemist. That's what I do. And so I look at molecules. And when I look at the body, I think about it in terms of reactions. And so we're going to zoom in a little bit today. And we're going to talk about a certain class of molecules called proteins. Now, if you're like me before I got into this and you say protein, I'm thinking protein shakes or my chicken or steak dinner, right? It's, it's a food group. And how many of you, protein is a food group? Yeah. And if you're a vegetarian, it's a more important food group because you're not eating meat. You've got to get it somewhere else, right? But that's also a class of molecules. Now, small molecules, it's something like an aspirin or a Tylenol you would take. But proteins are large molecules with hundreds or even thousands of atoms. And we're going to learn to, today, talk about them. They have to fold in these very intricate shapes. And we're going to use this as an example to look the difference between unity and harmony. And then in the second part of this lesson today, we're going to discuss how you find your place in the body of Christ. So last week, hopefully, we used the, the metabolic map, and you could see yourself as a member of the body of Christ. We talked a little bit how it's difficult it's difficult maybe sometimes to imagine ourselves as being the hands or the feet. We may not feel that you have that big a visible role in the body of Christ. But there are hundreds and millions of billions of other members that we can't see with the naked eye that have to be there or life just isn't possible. And so hopefully last week you were able to say, you know what, I am a valued, essential member of the body of Christ. And this week I want to help you see I know where my place is in that body. So we're going to talk about proteins, and if you've never heard of proteins, this is the first class of biological molecules we talk about when I teach my senior level biochemistry course, because they are the workhorse of the body. They carry out just about every single reaction and function in the body. They're carried out by these molecules called proteins. So if you eat a meal and you need to break down the proteins that come from that so you can use it for energy or the sugar, the glucose, if you need to break that down and then build it up and use it, proteins do that. If you need to copy your DNA, cells divide and both new cells get a copy of DNA, proteins do that. Your blood sugar, 
we got to keep the blood sugar at a very narrow range or you have diabetes. You become hyperglycemic or hypoglycemic. It's a protein called insulin that carries out that function. Our five senses, our sight, our sound, our taste, touch, all those are mediated by proteins. So these are the workhorses of the body. Now, well, today for this example, and this is just a metaphor, and like any metaphor, if you carry it too far, it starts to break down. But let's just imagine that one protein is the body, and we're going to look at the, each individual units, the atoms, and see how they come together. So if we could go to slide number two, please. Uh, so it's not showing up real great here, but these are a bunch of different protein molecules, and this is just an artistic representation. But I want you to take away from this is that they don't look alike. This one's a big circle with lots of subunits. This one's a, a big sphere with a tube right down the middle. These here are called beta barrels. You can put stuff inside of them. Um, anybody ever seen the, the glowing jellyfish? Right? So the molecule that makes the jellyfish glow is right here. It's a protein. I actually do that in my lab. I make uh, bacteria and stuff glow. It's kind of fun trips the kids out, right? But if you notice, none of these look alike. And that's because it is a principle in biochemistry that structure equals function. Now, if I had a bolt here, and I needed to drive a bolt into this podium for some reason, I wouldn't use a hammer, and I wouldn't use a screwdriver. I would need a wrench, right? But if I wanted to drive a nail in, I would pick a hammer. Now, it seems very simplistic, but you would pick the right tool for the job because of how it's shaped. Its structure equals its function, and so it is in our body. We have millions of different proteins that carry out all these different functions, but they have to fold into the right shape in order to carry out their function. All right. So, let's go to slide number four here. There we go. So, this is the protein insulin. Uh, at one time, I had this entire sequence memorized. I worked with it every day for seven years. And we all know what insulin does in the body. It helps can regulate our blood sugar. And this here is just a sequence of atoms that are connected to make the insulin molecule. So it's just like a name. My name is Jonathan, and I have to put the letters in the right order, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N. If I go in and I pluck off any one of those letters, then it's not Jonathan anymore. All right? Not only do they have to be the right letters, but they also have to be in the right order. It's like our English language. I can spell the word cat, C-A-T. That makes sense. We know it's a feline. But if I reverse those and I put T-A-C, I don't know what that is. Same thing in our cells. So we have to have a sequence of atoms, and they have to be connected in the right order. And this is an example of unity, right? Unity means it needs to be complete or joined together as a whole. And so when the proteins in our body are created, they are created in unity. The whole sequence has to be there. Every atom has to be part of the body. And they're not showing it here, but there are bonds, in between each one of these bonds held together by love, they're part of the body. But simple unity in this situation is not enough. Instead, they have to fold into this beautiful, at least to me it is, three-dimensional shape. Now, we, we call this a ribbon structure because it just kind of shows the backbone and it help us, helps us visualize what the molecule looks like. So down here is a ribbon structure of insulin. And if we just had this, if we just had unity in the cell, this, in, this molecule wouldn't do anything. In fact, and we'll talk about it in a little while, it would actually be dangerous. You know, there's a lot of danger in being united for the wrong purpose. Be careful what you join yourself to. Make sure that you understand the reason, the focus, the purpose of any group that you attach yourself to. Because if you're in unity with the wrong neighbors, you can become dangerous to the body. It's, it really will, and we'll talk about it in a little while, that, that if this happens in the body, eventually you could get death. But if you fold into this nice three-dimensional structure, this is an example of harmony. 
each molecule has to occupy the right position. It has to work in concert with the other atoms in order to have this structure and then carry out its function. Let's go to the next slide. So there's two things, two things that make a protein go from just the linear sequence to the folded shape. And the first is the environment. The environment. It's the number one reason that a protein will fold. And in this case, the environment must be water. Now, like I said, any metaphor, well, you can break down if you take it too far. But in this case, I think it's helpful for us to realize that water is a type of the spirit. Right? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He wasn't talking about physical water, but he was talking about the spirit. Right? And our body is about 60% water. Each individual cell is about 70% water. And our blood is about 90% water. And this is the environment that these proteins must carry out their function. So clearly, they must take into account water when folding into shape. And what will happen is, is proteins will fold just like we do. They will fold to maximize the number of interactions with their environment. It can't be helped. You will adopt the confirmation in your life that maximizes the interactions with your environment. That's why it's so important to watch where you go, to watch who you hang out with, to monitor those that are around you so that you are in the right environment, making the right interactions. Because this is not something you choose to do. It's just a natural process. This protein doesn't have a brain. It doesn't say, hey, I'm in water. Let me be this way. No, it's automatic. It's natural. It is into us that we will maximize the interactions with our environment. That's why it's so important to watch where you go, who you're with. That's why it's important to be in church. Now, this is one of my favorite slides to use in my biochemistry course. So over here on the left, these silver ribbons, this is the correct structure of this particular protein. This is the structure that it will shape, it would take when it's in water. And I want you to notice that it's buried... These green bars, we don't have to know what they are right now, but these green bars are buried on the inside, and you notice that most of the red ones are on the outside. And this is the shape this molecule needs to take in order to function. But if I take this molecule out of water and I put it in oil, look how it changes. Now it's not compact anymore. It doesn't have the specific structure. It unfolds. It gets this elongated shape, kind of like a horseshoe. And notice that its priorities are flipped now. The things that are on the inside are now on the outside. And the things that are on the outside are now on the inside because it is now wanting to maximize the interactions with the wrong environment. And this is stable. This is a stable structure. This structure has unity. But you know what? It is completely 100% useless. Because it has to be in the right conformation. It has to be in the right structure in order to carry out its function. If you're not in the right environment, you become misshapen and you cannot carry out your function. That's why it's so important to be in church. That's why it's so important to come in and, and feel the Holy Ghost around you. Because every once in a while, it's, it's normal. I feel myself during the week, I start to kind of get out of shape a little bit. Somebody says something, or I get disappointed, or I get frustrated, or I'm tempted, and I start to get out of shape just a little bit. But when I come in here, the, the water is around me. The Holy Ghost is here. The Spirit's moving. My brothers and my sisters come up to me and be like, hey, you need to move back in. You need to get back in position. And you can't do that at home. I know I love to watch preaching videos and listen to them. And I have church by myself, but that is not a replacement for being in the house. You need to come to church so you can interact with the spirit. You can interact with the water and get back into shape. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the second most important thing that helps a protein take its shape. So remember, we're talking about how you go beyond unity to harmony and how the body carries out its purpose is interactions 
with other members or with other atoms. So this here is what's called an alpha helix. So there's that circular ribbon structure we've been seeing. You can see it in blue here. This is one of the most stable protein shapes in nature. We find it plants, animals, bacteria, all of their proteins at some point will have, in fact, not all of them, most of them, 90% of them, will have this structure. And this structure is repeated throughout nature and in our body because it is mo most stable. It's more stable than just about any other structure you can see. And you want to be, have a lot of structure. You want it to be solid because there's a lot of other things in the environment that you have to be able to resist in order to carry out your function. Now, I don't know, get a, let's see, make sure we don't get too sciencey here, but if you'll just walk with me. Notice here along this backbone, the little bars. Those are bonds. That's holding it together in unity. But that only keeps it together in the sequence. So I brought a, a USB cable because we all have one of those nowadays. Right? This has unity. And it's just like a wet spaghetti noodle. Can you imagine all the different ways I can twist this and turn this and make it into shapes? But here, we've started to coil it. Right? So we've made these coils. And what holds these coils together are these little bars here, and here, and here, and here. And these are fellowship. They're really called hydrogen bonds, but today we're going to call them fellowship. <laughs> these are interactions. These are interactions that are not forced upon you. See, when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and you're written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you become a part of the body whether you want to or not. You're brothers and sisters with everybody else that's part of the body whether you want to be or not. You can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. Same thing goes for the church. <laughs> When you're a part of the body, you can't say, well, I'm going to just send my foot away. I don't like them. You're part of the body. They're connected. But there's a different, there's a whole other level of interaction that you choose to interact with them. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You got to love everybody, but you ain't got to like everybody. Is that too real? Is that, is that too real? I love you, but sometimes I might not like you. My wife tells me that all the time. Thank God she loves me. This white hydrogen here is making an interaction. It just called him and said, hey, let's go out to lunch. Looks like you've been down. I think you need some encouragement. He says, hey, I noticed you're going through something. Let me pray for you. The more interactions you have, the more stable you are. The more stable you are, the more likely you are to stay in shape. And the more we're in shape, the more likely we are to carry out our function. There's, there's more to it than just unity. We've got to have harmony. And that harmony comes from interactions, from fellowship, from reaching out one to the other. Amen? All right. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Are you up here reading my notes? Yeah. All right. Let's go to slide number seven. So in this picture, on the right-hand side, this is, we've got a color coded. This is cytochrome C. This is a protein that's absolutely necessary for generating energy in our body from when we uh, eat food. So break down fats, lipids, sugars. Eventually, this protein comes in, and it helps us to create energy. Now, this is unity over here, and we've got it color coded. You can see we've got a blue region, a green region, blue region down here. And notice that structure I just showed you with fellowship. What happens is, is these guys got together and they formed a cohesive unit. And they fellowship and they love each other. And these ladies here have a prayer meeting. And they have a prayer team. And they encourage each other. And we got the youth group down here and they're working together. And notice that this group is not necessarily interacting directly with this group down here. They're far apart in this body. But when each one, each group, forms the shape that it needs to shape, <laughs> shape that it needs to take, they all come together to form the functional molecule. 
It's okay that you don't know everybody's name in church. That's okay. You should try. It's okay, though, because you're going to naturally associate with some people. But you need to make sure that those associations are good and positive and encouraging. And at the same time, just because you're not interacting down here doesn't mean you need to be talking about them, gossiping behind their back or putting them down. Just because they're not part of your group doesn't mean they're not essential because they all have to drop their position in order for the body to function. Let's go to slide number eight. I've got to make up a few minutes here. So I told you earlier that just simple unity is not enough because you can be united in a dangerous way. Here is a list of some catastrophic diseases that we are battling right now as the human race that are a result of proteins that have the right sequence, but they're misfolded. Has anyone's life been touched by Alzheimer's? It's the result of a misfolding of amyloid beta protein. How many of you have heard of mad cow disease? Down here on the bottom, these prion proteins. So here's a list of dangerous molecules that, if they misfold, can kill the body. You know what's even more dangerous is there's a whole class of these that if that protein misfolds, it's not just happy being misfolded by itself, but it actually causes other proteins to start misfolding too. See, it's dangerous when you've got unity, but you don't have harmony. Let me see if that next slide is here. Pull it up, please. Yeah. So in the middle here, right here, this is, this is what this protein should look like. This is amyloid beta. This is the one that causes Alzheimer's. At least we think it does at this point. And it should be in this structure here. Three alpha helices, two beta sheets. But then something happens, and we're not sure why, and it misfolds. And it goes from this structure to this structure. Instead of being tightly compacted, you remember talking about being compacted in the last, put together, joined together, it becomes more diffuse. And then the things that should have been on the inside start to poke out on the outside. And where it should have been interacting with water, it should have been interacting with the spirit. And start, instead, it starts looking with interactions with other people that think like it. Be careful if you're not in the spirit and walking in the spirit and trying to live and interact with the Lord and the Holy Ghost because inevitably you will begin to interact with things that are not right for you. Birds of a feather like to flock together. And that's exactly what happens here. See these two little blue beta sheets? They're not supposed to be there. That's bad thinking. And all of a sudden they find somebody else that thinks like them and they stick together. And before long, they're corrupting other proteins. And then you've got these long sheets. And you actually will create cavities, dead spots in the brain. Just because they misfolded. Just because they valued the interaction with people that thought like them over interactions with the Spirit of God. Is this too much? Be careful. Be careful what you're interacting with in your environments. Next slide, please. I think of it like a, a well-tuned engine. Brother Braden is in here. I don't know. You know, he's a gearhead. It's like you ever pull up to a stop sign, you're next to a car, and you can tell that it's really running. It's, it's nice. The camshaft is in time with the crankshaft, and you got the right amount of fuel and air coming in from either the carburetor or the injection. There's no restriction on the exhaust, and you can hear it purrs, right? That, that machine is in harmony. All the pieces are there, and you can feel it. It has power. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I and mean, then you pull up next to another car, and all the pieces are there. It's got harmony. It's got a carburetor, but it ain't tuned right, and the timing belt's messed up, and you get... <laughs> Sounds like my first car. <laughs> and it's running, but it don't have any power. Because it doesn't have harmony. Same thing with the church. If you walk in the back door and there's gossiping and there's backbiting and you got a click over here that doesn't like a click over there, you can feel it. Something dysfunctional. There's no power. But when you walk into a sanctuary 
and you know that everybody's in the right place, and they've got interactions and bonds with each other. You know what? That harmony leads to power. Lives are changed. Mm, I'm, I want to preach, but I'm supposed to be teaching. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the reason that the body's sick. I don't want to be the reason that somebody comes into the church and says, I can't get what I need here. That I see the people, the preacher's preaching, the worship team is worshiping, but there's no power. I don't want to be the reason because I'm not in the right position. You need to get a hold of the Holy Ghost and let him show you where you need to be. Harmony leads to power. Mm. All right, I need to move on. So how do I find my place? It's one thing to know you're supposed to be somewhere, but how do you find it? Biochemists have been asking that sel- ourselves that for years. So much, though, we have a name for this. It's called Leventhal's Paradox. So many options. Next slide, please. So this is a very simple molecule. Four atoms, three bonds. One, two, three, four. Four atoms, three bonds. Now, if we just said that each one of those bonds could adopt two positions, 90 degrees like this, or 180 degrees straight out, they could either do this or they could do that, you would get four options. That seems pretty basic, pretty simplistic. But that's not even close to what happens in nature. This is a real molecule with three bonds. And each one of these can rotate 360 degrees. That one 360, this one 360, this one 360, and this one 360 degrees. If you take a real molecule, there are now 46,000 different confirmations this molecule can make. 46,000. And you know less than 10 of them will actually carry out the function it needs to. And if you're talking about real proteins, next slide, it gets even bigger. So this is called Leventhal's Paradox. So let's, instead of having four, let's take something with 303 atoms or 101 residues. And we're going to make some simplifying assumptions. Because if we don't, the numbers just get so big the calculator freaks out. But if we looked at 101 residues or 303 atoms, which is a small protein, it's not even close to something like hemoglobin, which carries the oxygen in our blood, we would get 5 times 10 to the 47 possible confirmations. I don't know about you, but that's a big number. I've got it written out here. That's a 5 with 47 zeros behind it. That's bigger than the national debt. (laughs) And it's going to be bigger than the national debt tomorrow. (laughs) Next slide. Now, imagine if magically that protein could sample 13 trillion. Still, that's about still bigger than the national debt, right? 13 trillion of those confirmations, if it could sample those every second. Right, these are big numbers. 13 trillion a second, if it could go through and say, okay, that's one, two, three, four. 13 trillion a second. It would still take 1 times 10 to 27 years of that number. Or longer than scientists estimate our galaxy has existed for a protein to sample all the possible confirmations. But let me tell you, a protein will find its right confirmation in our body in about two seconds. This is not a biologically relevant time scale. Life will not exist if we had to do this. But it takes something that complex and does it in about two seconds in our body. I find this amazing. Beautiful. Let me show you how this happens. We got 10 minutes. We could do this. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5:14, he says, "For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead." And I want to focus on that very first portion that the love of Christ, the agape love, constrains us. 
from Barnes Notes on the Bible, he says, constrains us. This word properly means to hold together, to press together, to shut up, to press on, to urge, to impel, or to excite. The pulpit commentary says, constraineth. The word means to compress us and therefore keep us irresistibly to one object or one objective. Or Vincent's word studies, I like this one, it says, constraineth. It is the word rendered, I am in a strait. You ever heard that saying, I'm in a strait? The idea is not urging or driving, but shutting up to one line, one goal, one purpose, as in a narrow, walled road. The love of God constrains us. It holds us to have one focus, one purpose, so that we're not off chasing our fleshly desires, that we're not getting distracted by the things of the world. It says it constrains us and it holds us to one place so that we don't have to consider that untold number of possibilities. There's only one possibility for us. And you're like, well, that's great, but how does that make a protein fold? Paul's saying that the love of Christ literally limits what we can do. But it isn't a bad thing. It keeps us focused on the task. It prevents us from pursuing our own carnal desires and our own wishes. So pull up the next slide, please. So these proteins, how they do it so quickly in our body, is they don't have to sample that untold number of different possibilities. You don't have to go out and check everything. I'm guaranteed if you're here in Columbus, Georgia... 99.9% sure that your position in the body of Christ is not in Zimbabwe right now. You know how I know that? Because you're sitting here. So this protein, it starts out, it's like a wet spaghetti noodle. It can adopt any confirmation. And it doesn't have to explore all of them. Instead, what happens is local structures begin to form. What happens is a couple of members begin to have fellowship with one another. Remember we started the Alpha Helix, how we said they have fellowship. They begin to have fellowship. They begin to create connections with each other. And then when they do that, it limits the possibilities of the atoms adjacent to them. So think about that. I'll use my family as an example. I come to Church of Columbus. That limits where my son can go to church. He ain't getting up and going to the first church on the corner. He's 11. If he's going to church, he's getting in my car and he's coming here. My position is limiting his choices. And that's the way it is in the body of Christ. That whenever you find your position because you're connected by love. Now this doesn't apply if you're not connected. This only applies when you're connected, but if you're connected by love, what your brothers and sisters do is going to constrain you. It's going to limit your position. You can't walk in here on Sunday morning and say, like, I'm going to teach the toddler class. No, Sister Rebecca's back there doing a great job. You're constrained. And what happens is, is more and more of these find their position. So here, 8 through 15 have formed a beta loop. And what they do is now it brings these two arms into close proximity and they snap into place. And now instead of these two, it's like 30 atoms there. Instead of those atoms having to explore every possible confirmation, they're in close proximity. So they form interactions and they snap into place and that further limits those outside of them. And so you go from that untold number of possibilities down to one possibility in just a few seconds. Imagine if you're the first person here in church. You can sit anywhere you want to. First person here, it takes them 10 minutes to decide where they want to sit. Oh, I can sit on the front, but that's where sister so-and-so says, maybe I want to sit over here, but no, the choir's too loud if I sit there. I can sit over here, but no, sister so-and-so sits there, and I don't feel like talking to her today. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It takes 10 minutes. But as the church begins to fill up, you walk in, there's only a couple of seats left. And if you're the last soul here and the place is packed, you've only got one option. You can't go sit anywhere. You're constrained. And it's, I know that is a simple, I know that's simple, but that is literally what is happening right now in your body. That all those untold millions and billions of possibilities come down to just one. 
because of the constraint, because you're connected to the body. You just have to submit to it. You just have to submit to it. Now, there's been a lot of times, I'll be very honest with you, it's easy to stand up here and preach. The Spirit of God is here. You're a great congregation. My wife will tell you, there's been times I'm in my prayer closet, and I haven't felt real great. I'm like, God, I don't know where you want me. I don't know my place. Like David had to encourage himself in the Lord. It's like, if he knows the number of hairs on your head, don't you think he knows where you fit? Come on. When you go take a shower, he knows how many fall out. And if you're like me, it's been a lot more lately. I noticed the numbers up here have gone down, but the numbers here and here have increased. The number of hairs on my head don't seem to be changing. They're just moving locations. But he knows that. And if I know that he knows that, that little bitty detail that seems inconsequential, then he knows why you're sitting here today. He knows why you're living in that house. He knows why you're working that job. And it's no accident. He has constrained you. Oh, my, my, if you could get a hold of this. You wouldn't walk out of here saying, I don't know where I'm supposed to be. You're right where you're supposed to be. He's put you here. He's constrained, and he's got a purpose for you. Now is not the time to get confused. You need to trust God. I got to close. Why don't we all stand? If it's appropriate, grab hands with a neighbor. Pray with us. God, I ask you to touch every person in this house today, Lord. Help them, God, to submit to the constraint that you have put on our life, Lord. Help us, God, to realize that it is no accident that we are where we're at right now. Lord, I ask you to please minister to us, God. Help us this week, Lord, to find our place in you, God, to submit to it, Lord. You have constrained us in love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.